Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It looks like Diddy really sort of opened a large can of worms here with these Excel 4 macros. Now, a lot of research, of course, recently has gone into Visual Basic for application code in Office documents. And looks like there was a little bit of blind spot here for these older Excel 4 macros. We keep getting interesting samples from our user. Diddy just looked at another one that came from a user. And what was interesting here is that the initial Excel macro actually downloads additional code from a website, adds it uh, to a spreadsheet, and then executes it. Now, initially, we weren't able to get the all of that code that it downloads, but eventually Diddy was successful via a virus total search to find the additional code, which would download more HTML actually, and then again, insert it into Excel to uh, execute it. So these are some of these interesting multi-stage kind of exploits where you first have a downloader that's then downloading additional code. Have seen this a lot, of course, uh, with a mapper, but uh, really interesting to see how the same concept is being implemented here in Excel 4. And then again, as a reminder, these Excel 4 macros, yes, they will run in the greatest and latest version of Excel. And of course, are often missed uh, by anti malware and then for a change, we don't have a site channel attack in Intel CPUs, but uh, today against AMD CPUs. This work comes from researchers at the Technical University Graz, as well as the University of Rennes. And uh, what they are abusing here is what is of a little power saving algorithm. It's just there's a hash table that is used to figure out uh, in what memory bank to find the data for the next cache hit. And uh, by doing this, the system only needs to read one particular memory bank, uh, not the complete cache, and that of course saves power. Now, AMD doesn't exactly publish how this hash table works, so they had to reverse this. And well, once they figure it out how uh, this hash table works uh, for uh, this cache wave predictor, they were able to then develop two different possible exploits uh, to get access uh, to data at particular physical memory addresses. The first one they figured out they call Collide and Probe. And what this refers to is that they first figure out which memory they try to read. Then they come up with some other memory to read that ends up with the same hash. And uh, well, uh, via this collision, they're then able uh, to actually figure out some of the content of uh, that memory. Second one is Load and Reload. Now that according to research again, tends uh, to be more reliable to get to the actual data. And uh, what it requires is that you use the same CPU core and uh, then you are able to actually get data from a particular targeted process. What makes this sort of concerning is that according to research again, uh, this uh, would be exploitable via JavaScript in web browsers. That of course does significantly increase the attack surface here. Now, AMD counters that these attacks are actually not new and existing countermeasures that were implemented for things like Spectre should also be effective against uh, this uh, particular attack. So AMD just recommends make sure that your bias, your operating system and such is up to date to make sure that you're protected against uh, these attacks. But there is nothing special new or so that AMD is going to release. 
And AV Test took a look at Android anti-malware scanners. And what's interesting here kind of is that they included uh, Google Play Protect, which is a standard component of Android and sometimes used as an argument that you don't really need any third-party anti-malware scanner uh, because Google Play Protect essentially already is an anti-malware scanner. Well, uh, sadly, according to AV Test, uh, Google Play Protect isn't quite up to the task. What they found was that uh, for protection, where they assign a score from 0 to 6, well, Google Play Protect got a straight 0. That's probably the most important result here. Performance, yes, Google Play Protect ranks high here, gets a full 6 point. Usability, not sure exactly how to really, how Google Play Protect really fits in here, since really sort of more part of the operating system. And yes, they gave it here a score of 0. But even if you give it a full score of six for usability, it's still at the bottom end of uh, the different anti-malware programs. So if you're running Android, you may want to take a look at this to figure out which uh, particular anti-malware software is right for you if you're running Android. iOS, of course, sort of a different picture here uh, with uh, not so many hooks available in the operating system to actually operate successful anti-malware. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Next week, I was supposed to be in San Francisco for a SANS event. That event has moved all online. So if you're still interested, uh, please uh, register. On the other hand, uh, if you are already registered for a SANS event and uh, you no longer feel comfortable going or so because of the uh, coronavirus situation, then uh, just a reminder, we do have a special program set up where you can get a refund or convert it to an online event of your choice. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.